Thank you to CBCRM firstly, and thank you to the fellow sponsors for making today possible, and particularly Justin. And uh, <coughs> thank you to all of you for making today possible. And as um, both Caroline, thank you to Caroline and, and Alina for both mentioning that you're all here. You've all got out of bed this morning to make a difference. How many from Canberra? Yeah, I'm tipping you didn't get up at 5 a.m. like us <laughs> travellers did, so you'll be feeling bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I'm going to talk about personalisation and automation, and nice segues from the two previous speakers, actually, because uh, Caroline, in one of her slides, did mention automation is key, and both Caroline and Elena both mentioned, you know, there's a lot of people effort involved in making CRM actually work. So automation is, and I'm going to talk about how CVCRM can achieve personalization, which segues nicely with what Elena was talking about, because personalization is how, through the customer journey, we can actually have more relevant communication and make our constituents feel that we are relevant to them. But again, that takes a lot of effort. So if you're going to embark on a personalization journey, automation is definitely key. I'll just give you a little introduction to ourselves, talk about the benefits of personalization, and then we'll go into the hard stuff, the effort in actually doing it, and then the details, dive in a bit about how Civi can actually help with the automation, and we'll wrap up with a bit of Q&A. So we are a digital marketing and, and data science um, special. We're specialists in both of those domains, working in Drupal and Civi for over eight years, but in the business intelligence, analytics, predictive modelling, whatever you want to call it, arena for over 20. So our focus, particular focus is audience engagement through good use of data. And our experience with Civi CRM is that we've seen it scale to some pretty high volume marketing capability, email capability, quite complex campaigns, and we've seen personalization achieved through the use of automation. We work across the Australia and the UK. You could say we're Brexit ready. <laughs> uh, core team of six, but an extended freelance team of over 20. And in Australia we work uh, in the not-for-profit and commercial sectors. The UK, we specialise in media and entertainment. And um, a background across working in some pretty large B2C and B2B corporates like Sky, Toyota and Cisco, in some ways is kind of our own internal validation of, of how great we think Civi is, that it stacks up to commercial systems in many ways. So personalisation... It's not a new topic, uh, and you, but for today's purposes, what do we mean by personalisation? We mean more than a one-size-fits-all newsletter to actually achieve tailored messaging with relevant content to groups or individuals according to their characteristics, their engagement level or, or status with respect to your organisation. The benefits of personalisation are well celebrated. You can find lots of sources on this. But the, in, in essence, it's to increase what could be called conversions, which may be memberships, which may be donations, which may be purchasing a yoga session, to increase retention, to get them to renew their memberships, to come back and buy another uh, a session or product, but in general to increase engagement. And that means responsiveness to your communications, to increase engagement on your website, uh, and otherwise participation with what you have to offer. Okay, so they're the benefits, but it does come at a cost. It takes resources. So those resources could be divided into tools, data, people, resources. Civi, as mentioned before, our experience has been it will scale. Civi won't hold you back in achieving personalisation. It's, but it's only as good as the data that you have to put into Civi and how you can work with Civi to accommodate custom data. 
But we find the biggest gatekeeper is probably the people side, the people resources, the time and effort that you, you have to put into personalization. Because personalization, this nirvana of engagement up here, requires more messages. So do you have the time to actually make those messages? I'm going to talk to you about some ways, therefore, on the people side, what we can do about it. Because execution does take people and time, as, as I've just said. So to work smarter, not harder, we look to automation to help us to do that. So I'm going to focus specifically, I mean, this was such a big area. I uh, put this presentation together quickly last week and I spent the rest of the time culling it because it's, it's such a big area. So I'm just going to really narrow it down into the first thing. What are how do people actually experience personalization? They're going to experience it in in, a, in an email communication, for example, which has got some information that's particularly relevant to them. So what does that mean for you and the effort you've got to put into your mailing? Because mailing takes time to put together. You need the groups that you've got to set up for each of the individual messages that you've got. And ultimately, what's the data? How do you make your data smart or how do you make smart use of the data that's driving that? So we'll start, let's get into templates. So if you're going to be building a lot of templates, you might like to use an engine like Mosaico. Has anyone heard of Mosaico or is using Mosaico? A few. So they've just got out of beta version 1.0, I think, was released in March this year. So it's quite new. But the great thing is it will integrate right into Civi. So what you're looking at the left-hand side is, is a drag-and-drop interface where you can drag blocks from the left into the right and compose your templates on the fly. They're good-looking templates. The result is good-looking templates. The images are resized automatically. You can build them really quickly, and they are already responsive. So they'll work on multiple devices. So that will save you a lot of time on the first stage of building those templates. So you might have a stack of templates that, at the ready that you might use. But then we want to actually make them smart and personal. So we do that with tokens. So you're, many of you will be familiar with the standard tokens. <clears throat> so right out of the box, it's easy to put things like first name, last name, address fields, birth date, those particulars that sit on the contact record. You can also access custom data. So if you've got someone, if you've got help customising your data, we'll look at some custom data later, those tokens can also be available if they're on the contact record. But you may or may not be aware that you can go beyond that into, and with some development effort, is to access custom tokens, which could be coming from more complex parts of CVCRM, like relationships, memberships or events. And with that effort, those two can be available on the right-hand side, so you can drag them into your templates. Just more ways to personalise. The next level of personalisation in templates is to use Smarty. Has anybody heard of Smarty? A few of you have. <clears throat> so Smarty is some inbuilt logic inside the templates that is, is integrated into CVCRM that will enable uh, you to uh, use some logic and use things like if statements to change the content according to values of particular fields. So at this point, the non-techies, can uh, their eyes might glaze over, but it's, it's a relatively simple example of how um, you can create a variable and assign the value of a custom field to it. In this case, it's called industry. It's capturing the value of a custom field called industry. And if it says health, if industry value is health, we're going to say that first line. Otherwise, we're going to say the second line. There's just a note there. There's a couple of steps. It doesn't work. Smarty doesn't work out of the box. You have to enable it. There's a couple of technical things you've got to do. So you can read up about that on CVCRM. But here's a demo, that simple example, this is what it actually might look like. So there's two completely different emails 
coming from the one template. In this case, we've got two things going on here. We've got the, uh, the token populating in the blue, populating the template, but the smarty line is putting completely different um, sentence in according to the value of that custom field. <clears throat> so what does that mean for your mailing? Well, if you now, now that you know you can economize, economize on your templates, do you need as many groups? You can send the one email to the one group with a different message instead of having two completely separate groups. So the next thing in thinking about economising on the effort it takes to set up your mailings is the use of smart groups, which uh, the membership of a smart group is that they are dynamic according to the data that's, um, that you're maintaining on your contact records. The third way you can economise on the effort for setting up mailings is skipping groups altogether which is that you can actually send a mailing from the results of a search. This is another way you can save time. So some guidance on that. When do you use groups and when can you use an advanced search? So the recommendation would be the old 80-20 rule. Set up the groups that you're going to need most of the time, the, the standard groups, all members, all donors, all event attendees. And through the mailing, you can use your groups intelligently to have include and exclude groups so you can get some pretty sophisticated combinations that will ultimately arrive to, your, to the audience and to be more relevant to that audience. And those exclusions could be standard exclusions. Again, you could use all members or all non-members as, as exclusions. And have special exclusion groups, for example, all contacts who responded to a particular mailing. You don't, when you don't want to send them a reminder. Or you could actually, as per the, this example, you could actually use the mailing itself. So in week one, you might send to all members of a group. And in week two, you might send a thank you to those who responded. And then when you send a reminder to the group, you can actually use the mailing itself, the thank you, as an exclusion group. So you don't send the reminder to anyone you've already thanked. When to use advanced search. So advanced search, you may or may not know, you can actually take an action on the results to send an email, to send a scheduled email to the results of an advanced search. So this is good for one-off mailings where you really don't want to go to the effort of actually setting up special groups or if the criteria is, is complicated or if you have many, many small segments that you just don't want to have a proliferation of groups for. You have your big groups, but you, you might have mailings to a very small number of people, and you can send straight out of the advanced search for those. And uh, I worked with a particular client who had the need for a lot of very niche segments. And for that, we actually set up a custom search. So they could have a search that was tailored specifically to their needs. So in this example, across two fields of industry and region and that they could make selections out of those and email the results. There are literally dozens, if not hundreds, of combinations of all of the fields, of all the possibilities uh, for sending a mailing to these people. Then, on the topic of automation, so what we've looked at al already is mailings. It still takes some effort to set up a mailing. So what about going completely hands-free and using scheduled reminders? So a scheduled reminder is, a, is when you have a date-based trigger to send with which you can send a personalised email. So you, it's, it works in situations where you've got a date, which could be a date on the contact record, it could be on an activity, it could be on an event, a membership or a contribution. It's, it's basically set and forget. The scheduled reminders can make full use of templates, which means you can make use of tokens, including custom tokens, and the smarty logic applies. 
So this is where we're talking about completely automated email. So use scheduled reminders where you have date-based triggers, and that's going to economise on the efforts taking to set up mailings. So use the mailings when you have a, a more broad uh, set of communications that you need to do, like your newsletters and, and so forth. So the third area is, OK, if you're going to have smarter templates and you can be smarter with your mailing, it really does depend on, on the data that's populating those. <clears throat> Civi will only be as good as the data that you have to feed it. So, as we've already seen, <coughs> Civi is highly customizable, and its ability to accommodate custom fields to then allow you to populate those fields with profiles and to import the data directly through the interface or even through the database is where you really start wielding the power of Civi CRM. So, custom fields are available. Um, in custom sets, and you can have a custom set per for all contact types, or you could have them per contact type, or you could even have them per contact subtype. So if you have different types of individuals that have different bits of data that you want to collect about them, CV will flex to be able to accommodate fields that are, are relevant to some and not to others. Getting the data in, you can use profiles just to save yourself time with a, a data entry screen where you, I mean, it's still a manual effort, but this will go some way to saving you the time of being able to perhaps do a search and take an action to update multiple records using a profile. And that little icon there on the left of industry will actually copy values, the first value to all of them. As I said, data entry is still quite manual, so my preference would be to upload the data, and Civi provides a user interface for doing just that, which is very flexible. We don't have time to go into the detail of that now, but it just the significance of it is that you can incorporate third-party data that you're collecting outside of, of the system, or you could be importing data that's coming from your CMS system, for example, the last time they logged into the website as a proxy for engagement. Um, then this is where you can get really smart with analytics. And actually something you might do outside the system is analyse your constituent base and apply some segmentation or some predictive analytics. You can get very sophisticated but to make it actionable, you've got to get it back into CIVI. CIVI, remember, as we said, CIVI will do the job, but you've got to, it's what you bring to it. Oh, and my preference down the bottom is to import directly to the database, because actually that will alleviate the human effort of, of doing the importing as well. That lends itself to even further automation. So in summary, I'm doing pretty well on time. Um, <clears throat> nothing like culling. So, uh, in summary, yeah, personalization takes effort. You have to decide whether it's worth it. If you, if you believe it's worth it, then embark on the journey and embrace the automation possibilities with Civi. The resources breaks up into tools, data and people. Civi will support execution to pretty much any size audience, any campaign complexity. On the data side, with good planning, Civi will accommodate the custom data, including external inputs, and support sophisticated segmentation. The people is the main limiting factor. It's the time and the imagination to create those multiple messages. But as we've seen, there's ways that you can economise. The key, automation, being smart with the templates, being smart with your mailing and being smart with your data. So I'll flip into some Q&A. Um, if whether you have questions, I've got a, a, some other slides too, which I can also share just in terms of best practices, but feel free to chime in. And um, if there are no questions, I'll just keep going. But uh, feel free, yeah. Um, do you have any smarts or recommend any smarts?
asked in relation to the deliverability. Because I yeah. think that increasingly the problem is not so much to get brilliant emails out, but to get people's eyes actually to see them. Yep. I'm glad you asked. Okay. So this is deliverability for everyone. It means how do you know your email actually reached people? So our recommendation would be to use a service, an external service, a, a dedicated SMTP service. There are many on the marketplace. Amazon, we prefer Amazon SES because it made it easy to integrate CV bounce processing. CV bounce processing means that you're getting uh, information back from, the, from the, the, the delivery agent to find out whether that actually reached someone. So this is really important to understand deliverability. The report itself, the CVCRM report, will tell you out of the total intended recipients how many successful deliveries there were. So in this case, 99.28%, which is pretty good. No, that's so. The next level of of information is the number of opens. So seven thousand five hundred eighty five is telling you these are the people that opened it, and if you got the total opens, that's telling you that they might have opened it. Well, they've definitely opened it multiple times, and that is actually that is actually available as a list. So that's being recorded into the CVCRM database. So going back to smart data that we talked about earlier, that you can actually get at that information, make a group out of it. Make a group out of everyone that responded to your campaign or make a group out of everyone who didn't. And that group who didn't, you can, that's where you might decide you're going to send another email, have another go. They didn't open the first one, they might not have seen it. So deliver, answering the delivery question is on two levels. One is the physical delivery. Did it actually reach the mailbox? And the second level is, did they open it? And the third level is, did they click through? I had a comment on yeah. there. Um, so the, the currently there's a bit of a blind spot with CiviCRM, but whilst bounces and, and tracking happens through for the bulk mailing through Civi Mail, there's a blind spot in terms of the other stuff that's going out, like scheduled reminders and yeah. receipts and so on. Yeah. And if you go to civicsharing.org slash blog, one of the recent blogs on there is about a new extension that's available for free. Put it down on your site. It's, I think it's called Transactional Mail, and it will basically create an activity for all that other stuff and allow you to also track it through here. So you don't hit those blind spots where you go, we don't know if those typical yeah. reminders are actually being delivered or, or necessarily whether they look as you expected. That's great. Uh, what well, you know. The significance of what Peter's talking about here is, oh, I was thinking about this on the way through, is like, I'm advocating use of scheduled reminders, but what intelligence have you got about whether that's reaching people? Are they interacting? Remember, the, the subject, the overarching subject in all of this is engagement. And, and we know about engagement in a modern digital world by the intelligence that we're getting back through our digital media. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I'm not saying we are doing mentioned schedule provider and, and other brands. So um, I was kind of reading this you schedule around like, TV mail go out. No, it's, it's a very, got, thanks for the question. A scheduled reminder is a very specific feature of CVCRM to actually, it's available through the communications menu to actually set up a completely different mail. It's not like a normal email or a bulk mail. It's a dedicated thing in its own right. Called a, it's called scheduled reminder. And it's, um, it shares, there's, it shares uh, the ability to use templates in common with those other mailings. But it, it itself is a different um, channel, if you like, for communicating with your, with your constituents, which enables you to use a trigger. So whereas in the other examples, you're, you're still sending mail in bulk. This is using a trigger that's on the database, which could be uh, relevant to only one person. Whether it's relevant to one person, a thousand people, it doesn't matter. It's using the date as a trigger and saying, whoever has this date or 
uh, for this particular activity at this status, send them this piece of communication. Which is, um, which is a great way to achieve personalisation, yeah. So one of the other things that we've been finding a bit more of late is the Gmail promotions. Yeah. Promotions sort of have is capturing a lot of our sort of hot mail and I think there's not anything clear enough. I also know that their hot mail is now doing or like now with their thing now got other inboxes which might capture a lot of the bulk mail. So you might so engagement might tend to suffer in a sense because people aren't seeing that they're gonna just go into this big promotions. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm coming from because the disparity between successful deliveries and orders <coughs> over the last two years is going so far south, 25%. And, uh, that's, yeah. That's where we often struggle. It and is. You have the wonderful emails, but the only one seeing it is the spam filter on the mail server on the client. So, so, so one issue there is that if you're sending from a server that your domain isn't, it doesn't sort of owner oh, isn't, isn't listed with, yeah, then, then you need to deal with all of that side of stuff too, yeah, which is yeah. Un unpleasant but necessary. In other words, there's a world of uh, best practice to do with mail in general, which is, some people might call that hygiene activities for your server so that you build trust. And they are beyond the scope of, of simply CV, but uh, they are contributing factors to your ultimate success. I have a few questions. Yeah. Um, about, uh, what do you place a great significance on in terms of your know, statistics? You need opens or click throughs and in relation to how that, how that affects how you design your newsletter as well. Like, you know, when I'm talking to our city customers, my general guidance is always to compile lots of content to measure click throughs. What do you I oh, know I would agree with that. I think there's a hierarchy of engagement. Just because somebody opened it uh, is not the same thing as somebody who has clicked through. You would definitely ascertain that that is a person who's more engaged. And so this is, this again is a, a broader subject that's not specific to CIVI. It's, it's the broader subject of database marketing and, and engagement as a, general, as a general subject and best practice about how you actually write your emails. You definitely want to have a call to action, just like uh, that sort of thinking pervades uh, web design. Is just more and more of a trend on the home page to have uh, to call to action buttons right there. The customer has come to the website for a reason. So how do you make your website more um, allowing them to come in? And the same thing for your, for your emails. Instead of the traditional pushing information at them, make it so that it's easy for people to, um, you know, relate from their perspective and be invited in and actually do something. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to speak to the open thing as well, just to point out that there is a, a slight gap in quality of that data and it's not strictly a city serum thing. Any major provider that tracks open <coughs> uses a methodology which basically relies on an image of one pixel image being opened and some clients are, will block those images as well. So you get the case where some email clients or services will actually not tell you if people are opening some of those things or they'll cache it so that a thousand people open it but only get one hit on the image. So there is a slight gap in that data but the city version is good as the managed version of that because it's a typical problem that people similar. Yeah. Sorry, I'd just like to add in there, you try, <coughs> this is just by actually putting a person's name um, for the email that's been sent out rather than marketing or no reply at. Um, it sometimes seems to go into the primary inbox. Um, we've noticed that it's, it stopped happening, it's becoming less now as they're getting smarter, um, but you still get some of them if you use an actual person's name send out the bulk email, um, it actually delivers more in primary as opposed to promotion. Yeah, they're all good, they're all best practice tips, but uh, technically the best tip we can, we can recommend is using a specialist service 
So um, what is it? MailChimp uses Mandrill or SendGrid, or you could use Amazon. Those dedicated services, serv services go um, to a lot of trouble to maintain their reputations with all the ISPs. Whereas when it's your own private server, you um, the way everyone starts off is you, you don't start off not trusted, but you don't start off trusted either. You start off neutral, and you have to build reputation. So why not use a service that's already doing working hard to have a good reputation, and you're uh, getting the benefit of that in terms of deliverability? That's um, that's it for me. But I mean, it's that's kind of a cue to say it is a continuous improvement journey. So thank you very much. Thank you back. Yeah.